I wake up in the morning, I get on my knees. I did learn from the master, he taught me to pray. I read on from the scriptures, the patience of Job. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. When you get into trouble, lift up your head and look up to the mountains where your help comes from. You surely have a refuge all night or day. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Why don't you trust in him? He's faithful and true. He promised to take us home on his soon return. Oh, don't and never look back. Believe in his word. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend. The only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend. The only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there yes, will when you cry out. out. Keep on and your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Welcome to this final episode or lesson in the Crucible with Christ. This is the 13th lesson. Um, what a journey we have been on. And today we are learning about Christ in the Crucible. I'd like to welcome our viewers from all over the world. We want to thank you for being with us over this last, um, this last quarter. We want to value your comments. Um, we hope that you're going to continue, share with everyone. Uh, and if you have any questions, sometimes you might not say the right thing. We are all learn learning. You must be like the Bereans so that at least all of us learn. So always ask questions. Look for us and let us discuss. Sometimes we might think, say things which are not correct. Please come also and correct us. And we will be the first ones to, to acknowledge that I think on this point we were wrong. Okay. We are all learning, we are all learning, we're always learning. Um, I'd like to welcome my friends. And my friends are uh, Dr. Um, Nyahuma. Amen. 
How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? Yes. And you, now you'll be saying Hotentag. Yes, I'll be saying Gutentag. Hotentag. <laughs> so what are you going to bring us? Oh, a lot of things. I want to bring you very good books. Oh, okay. Okay. What, what books are you going to bring us? Uh, things that you love. I know you love history, so I'm going to look for maybe Josephus. Oh, <laughs> I love Josephus. But I now I now learn I know a lot more about Josephus than I did before. Is it? Yeah. For instance, that I think he was more biased towards the Roman. Yeah. So okay. I know a little bit more. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Never stop learning. Um, how are you, Pastor? How's been your week? Busy, but fine. Yes. Yeah. We were together yesterday. Thank you. Yes, we, we had an ex small experience. <laughs> we can't share with the viewers. No, we can't. <laughs> But we, yeah, we had an experience together. Maybe we should just take this moment to pray. Um, Pastor, uh, no, get a, please pray for us. Pray. Father God, we are thankful once more for yet another time that you have awarded all of us to study and to learn more about Jesus. We pray as we learn about Christ and the crucible, um, it may change our lives and bring us up to heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we are learning about Christ in the crucible. We are learning about Christ in the crucible. We have already defined what the crucible is. Uh, maybe we might just want to define who Christ is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We might just conclude with this final act of just this small definition of who Christ is. Who is Christ? I want to look at, um, again, the role that he plays mm -hmm. theologically. Mm -hmm. That first and foremost, he is God the Son. Mm -hmm. And his role when he came on earth is Son of God. Okay. And what is he doing? He is dealing with sons of men. So he also becomes the Son of Man. Okay. Now, in all this, what, what is the goal? What is the end point? Mm -hmm. Which then puts him in this crucible? the son of God becomes a son of man, mm -hmm. to change the sons of men to become sons of God. Wow. That's, that's, wow. that's, that's Christ. Okay. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Look, uh, I never thought about it. I'm just thinking about it when you're speaking. You say the, the office or it's the anointed, so which means that you set apart for. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> wow. Now, if he is set apart, he is set apart for what? which is to save us, right? And so when we are looking at Christ in the crucible, so we're looking at the anointed one in the crucible. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anointed yes. one in the crucible. Yes, <laughs> the, <laughs> the anointed one in the crucible. Okay. How, so you can be anointed to be in the crucible. Uh, what, is it, what are your thoughts on that? that? That is powerful to think that because when you are anointed, mm -hmm. it's a special service. Mm -hmm. You're in the special branch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you are not where everyone else is. Mm -hmm. But to be anointed, mm -hmm. to participate and to be the leader mm -hmm. in what everyone else is going through mm -hmm. is, is, yeah. is a different call. Uh, it's a different call. And, and the most interesting thing, uh, Pastor Levin, is that um, the anointed one is anointed in, in the crucible. Yes. So which means that the crucible experience, Christ went through it or is going through or went through it. So he was anointed into mm -hmm. the crucible, into this experience that we ourselves are also going to go through. So which means that he has been through what we are already going through. So everything that um, we, we have, we experience. I don't know, what did you comment? Everything that we experience, he has already been set apart for it. Our sufferings, essentially, Elder, are not sufferings for the sake of it. They, they, are, they are sufferings with an intended purpose. Bringing us to, to where Christ is. Away. Here is something from the names of Christ. Mm -hmm. That is Jesus, and again your favorite guy, Josephus, mm -hmm. tells us that he knew more than 33 people were called Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
was a common name. It was the human name of Jesus. It represented his humanness, mm. the human element of Jesus. Mm. So when you are saying Jesus within the period here, mm. you are referring to the humanity of the Savior of the world, the one who suffers with us, what you have highlighted, mm. the one who goes ahead of us in the suffering. Mm. He suffers first. Mm. So when we go through there, mm. he does not understand our suffering from an abstract point of view. Mm. He understands our suffering from an experiential point of view. Mm. The Christ part now is what I love. Yeah. He just doesn't understand. Mm. He does something about it. Oh. So Jesus, the one who suffers. Christ, the one who does something about it. Mm. Oh, this is beautiful. I, I mean, even for us who are um, people who are experienced, for us who are in business, we always, there's always something about experience. Wow. Mm-hmm. Not about just the education. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you're looking for a certain person, uh, novice in something, you just look maybe for, for the qualification, okay, that they went to school. Yeah. Or they did some kind of uh, course. But when you're looking for a managing director, mm-hmm. you are looking for someone who has got maybe 20 years experience. It, in so many years in this uh, this space, you don't just talk to someone from college and take them to this uh, high office in an organization. You look for the experience. And the experience is the best teacher. And yet, we have Christ. Wow. Who, is, who is indeed mm-hmm. gone before us. Mm-hmm. So he has experienced wow. it. Yeah. But not only did he experience it himself, he also experienced it on our behalf. It's very, very interesting. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabatin, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's Matthew chapter 27, 46. Isn't that most of our cry? Every time? And yet, Jesus also made the same cry. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on Saturday? Okay, and, and this one is not mine. It's uh, my, my Pastor Lavin's father who, who mentored me in the ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I remember him for this one. Um, he says, do you see how Jesus is not crying over the pain? He's in great pain, but he's not weeping over the pain. He's weeping over separation from the father. What hurts him is being separated from his father, not the pain that he's going through. Oh, that's most interesting, isn't it? And we have been speaking about it all along, that Christians, as Christians, we must always think, that we must always remember that the battle is in the mind. It is not in the physical pain. So just alluding to what... uh, but Lavin's father said, okay, which, which you are now reminding us of, yeah. the mind and the things that Jesus Christ is going through, mm-hmm. he is going through, is this sacrifice good enough mm-hmm. to bring all these people to me? Mm-hmm. When I go, am I going to come back? All those things are things that are going on in his mind. Mm-hmm. And the pain is insignificant to yeah. this thing that is that is going on in his mind, isn't it? Wow. It is mind. It is mind. I don't know. Do, do you have any comments on Saturday? Th- th- thank you for, for that. Uh, you, you can't talk about what your father said. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Now he's all our father. He's our father. He's too. our father. Uh, but 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 I think that this gives us the blueprint for the kind of attitude mm-hmm. we should have in our sufferings. Mm-hmm. As I'm going through my crucible, what must occupy my mind mm. is not the, 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 the pain, the physical pain or the emotional pain, mm. but what, what, what must occupy my mind? What is my proximity to God in this crucible? Yeah. Yeah. What is my pr- yeah. it, but before you go there, I just wanted to highlight something, and I'm just going to take a detour, and I'm going to say this. Uh, please allow me to say it as carelessly as I can. You brought up uh, Pastor Ellen Moyer. Mm. And I think that as a church, we must find some time to find some accolade that we can give these men of God. 
Yeah, I'll give a pump pump to that. <laughs> yeah, not just because you are here, but there are many of them yeah. that we must recognize. Uh, I think of Pastor Dumba. Yeah. I think of uh, many others. We those men that have come before us Amen. that are responsible for where we are. <laughs> that laid the foundation. I mean, the reason why we know all these things mm -hmm. is because of where, of how they taught us. I, please allow me to just to take that moment and take this teacher. Okay, maybe going on to Sunday. Uh, this one is really for for people like yourselves who can really teach us the early days. <laughs> please just highlight to us what the early days uh, of Christ should be. Uh, Pastor Laven Moyo. Um, you know, when I when, when I was looking at the, this passage or um, on 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 Sasa Sunday, um, and my I've, I've, I encapsulated it by saying the early days were days of suffering, and I know Doc, Dr. Nyauma always speaks of Jesus borrowed. Uh, you know, he's, he's say that so, so many times. But uh, here is Jesus born into a manger, uh, born in a stable, uh, you know, uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Uh, and then in his early, early days, Herod comes and he says, I'm intimidated, you know, and he has to flee to e Egypt. Mm -hmm. so, so we find G Jesus, I remember it should be Ellen White who says that uh, when Jesus was born, uh, the devil concentrated his energies mm -hmm. on making sure that Jesus falls into sin. And so we find Jesus uh, not as an elevated prince or king, but he goes into poverty, he's born in poverty, he's born in suffering. Uh, and, you know, and, 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 uh, and even Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The place where he's born. The, the, the place where, where he grow, grows up. Mm -hmm. So he's, he faces poverty, he faces potential death, he faces prejudices. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the savior mm -hmm. of the universe. Power under control. Yes, mm -hmm. power under control. But any comments on, 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 on this part? Mm. I'm thinking about the, the message from Gabriel to Mary. Mm. When, when Gabriel says to Mary, you are highly favored one of the Lord. Mm. And Mary is even shocked by that salutation. And she says to him, what manner of salutation is this? Mm. And, and angel Gabriel then tells Mary what's going to happen. That uh, heaven has chosen her, mm. that she bores Christ. Mm. And imagine if it was me or if it was any other person that we know, if God is to come down and say, okay, look, we have a project and we want you to do it. Mm. Obviously, the first thing that comes to our mind is, it's going to be sponsored by heaven. Mm. Heaven cannot ask you to do something that they are not going to sponsor. Mm. And Mary obviously thinks, okay, it's going to be rosy. Mm. But what happens at church, they are now talking about this pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're discussing, okay, what happened? Joseph, tell us. Yeah? And Joseph is also struggling. Mm -hmm. Matthew says, whilst he was thinking of putting it away privately, mm -hmm. the angel came. Mm -hmm. So that relationship was done. Mm -hmm. And imagine you are Mary, mm -hmm. after the salutation of the angel, mm -hmm. to say, is this what it means to be chosen by heaven? Mm -hmm. The child is born. Mm -hmm. Look, if it's a child of heaven, you're not going to go into a, a, a hospital mm -hmm. that is you know, low class hospital or something like yeah, that. You're going to the high end. Going to the high end. Yeah. But, but where, the, where is the child born? In a manger. Okay. As soon as the child is born, mm. what then happens? They become refugees. Mm. They flee to Egypt. Mm. This, is, this is what's going on. Mm. And you are thinking, hmm. Is this really? Is this, is this what's going on? We we'll talk about this. Is this really? <laughs> this is powerful. I mean, I no, I'm just saying that, you know, when God is working with you and, and, and he's with you in a certain space, but you are thinking that this space is not really for people of, ch of the children of God. Yes. You want to have this elevated space because it's a heaven-sponsored program, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And yet you are in a manger. Yeah. I mean, I, this is very interesting, Pastor Raven Moy, that uh, Christ decides, uh, and it is a decision that he makes mm -hmm. about where he is going to be born and how. Power yes. under control. Where it to become just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And what is most interesting is that in the space where there is, so when he is beginning to grow up, mm -hmm. he goes into the temple and begins to teach. Mm -hmm. 
it is not expected that he knows the things that he is teaching about. Remember when he goes into the temple and goes, mm -hmm. this one, when he's born from the manger, he's not supposed to be in the temple mm -hmm. teaching people at 12 year old, mm -hmm. which means that the, our aspirations, our dreams are big, can be bigger than where we were born. Wow. Mm -hmm. The experience of where we are born yes. does not inhibit us from where we can be. <laughs> this, is, this, is what, uh, this is what we are learning from. Uh, and this, uh, just that crucible moment just allows us to become better, to become more educated. What is it that drives us, Pastor? What is it that drives us to become better? Okay, it is the place where we have been. It must not limit us. Okay. No. If I was to talk to you, uh, I know where you were born. Yeah. I know how you were born because you are my friend. Look at where we are now. Yeah. Okay. Which is God, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and like, and like uh, Pastor, Pastor was born in Edfield, you know. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but God in his mercy, yeah. we are all sitting here together yeah. to go for the jugular day. <laughs> Because you are my friend. But there's something that is just um, bothered me. I, I, I want you to help me from a theological perspective. With the exceptions of Adam and Eve before the fall, Jesus was the only sinless person who ever lived on earth. A sinless. What, what is that statement saying? Okay, you have to throw it to me. You are the professor. <laughs> was Jesus... Did he have the nature of Adam before, after the fall? Well, interestingly, mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching a class yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this question also came up mm -hmm. to say, which nature did Christ have? And this is a debate that has been going on in the Adventist church. It goes back to as late as uh, 1950s, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because there are two natures, the one of Adam before the fall, mm -hmm. and the one of Adam after the fall. Mm -hmm. And how I understand it mm -hmm. is that um, uh, uh, Christ is not like Adam in the sense of Adam. Mm -hmm. In that Adam, even though he fell, mm -hmm. and we are coming after Adam, I hope I'm not complicating it, mm -hmm. uh, he was created by God from the hands of God. Mm -hmm. We were born of a woman, mm -hmm. just like Christ. Mm -hmm. So Christ is like us in that he's born of a woman, mm -hmm. but then I believe that he had the nature of Adam before the fall, but carrying the consequences of after the fall. Yeah. That's why you'd get hungry, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know. So now, I can't understand a Jesus who has the propensities of Adam after the fall because he becomes a, sin, a sinful savior. Sinful savior can't save anyone. But, and this is how I reconcile it, in that even though he is like Adam before the fall, suffering from the consequences of sin, he comes and he's born at the worst of humanity. Mm. Not like Adam, but then he conquers like Adam was supposed to conquer, yet suffering more. Okay. Uh, do you have any comments? I, I'm struggling with what he's saying. <laughs> uh, well, because I, 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 the difficulty that I'm having is that how then did he, how does he understand what I'm going through? if he was not in the same space as I am? Mm -hmm. um, the professor said, well, I totally understand what the professor is saying. And, and uh, no, I disagree. Uh, well, no, 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 I don't disagree. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, I don't d d disagree. Because the, 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 this, is a, this is really a the theological debate, essentially. Mm -hmm. I think it's pre-lapses and post-lapses. Yes. Um, those are the theological terms we, which are used. Mm -hmm. But I, I like what the Apostle Paul says, great is the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the fundamental point. Yeah, that, that's how I cover it, the okay. mystery of godliness. <laughs> God be becoming man mm -hmm. uh, so, so that we can become like God wow. without being God. Wow. <laughs> okay. if, if I may made it worse. No, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to go further, but suffice to say that this is a debate that uh, we must have. And I think it's one of, we are going to be starting up some, we, might, we want to look at this uh, a bit further on when we are studying together mm -hmm. to look at the nature of Christ, the nature of Christ. It's something, and we, must, we must go to the scriptures and pick them and find how readest, 
How readest thou? How readest thou? Yes, it's, it's coming, yes. And, and then we are going to spend some more time to find out on the nature of Christ. Uh, suffice to say that uh, I slightly disagree with the pastor on my left. But um, <laughs> we go on. <laughs> but that, that's the reason why we should debate it, isn't it? But I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, despised and rejected of men. Yeah. Mm. We we'll start with you. Yeah. So Christ is rejected at the point of death, mm -hmm. but also rejected at the point of life, mm -hmm. but accepted in terms of provision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, when he's turning bread and he's providing lunch, mm -hmm. people love him. Mm -hmm. John actually says, no, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about these people. Mm -hmm. They are following you, not because they want me but because they want bread, mm -hmm. yeah? John highlights this, mm -hmm. that uh, when we talk about the rejection of Christ, mm -hmm. it's not a total rejection. Mm -hmm. They accepted his provision, mm -hmm. but they rejected his person, which would give more than which was for the temporal. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, you are very, you have actually said it, most probably better than all of us can, in that, um, the, the, I don't know if the, it's the right word, dichotomy, is that uh, Christ is providing. People are being healed. Mm -hmm. yeah. was one of them was Simon. I think it was Simon, isn't it? Was a leper at some point. They are all accepting the healing, but rejecting the Christ. Eh? That's a sermon right there. <laughs> hey, that's, a sermon. Eh? that's a sermon right there. That's, this is intriguing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, the despising does not stop because people have been healed. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? the, the people, have been, people have eaten. Yeah. People have been healed. Mm -hmm. They are able to see. Mm -hmm. They are able to have, to go home. They are able to see God. Mm -hmm and still they despise Christ. Wow, so mm -hmm. even for us now, mm -hmm. during times of crucibles, mm -hmm. we reject God. Mm -hmm. yes. But during the times when he crowns us with blessings, we accept him. Mm -hmm. So we are also in this dichotomy of accepting God when good times are good, mm -hmm. and rejecting him in times of mm -hmm. crucibles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th I think, that then pre presents a problem in that we are manipulating the divinity of Christ hey. to suit our framework. Mm. So we validate God's divinity or the Christ divinity mm. by the things he does for us which are in our favor. Mm. And we make it void mm. when Christ is not working in our favor. Mm. So essentially, it's like we're trying, trying to lock Christ into a cubicle where he must... Uh, act according to what we want. And, 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 and this is the, the challenge of humanity even now. Mm -hmm. as, as, as my friend has rightly said it, mm -hmm. when he's providing, mm -hmm. we worship him. Mm -hmm. When we're in the crucible, mm -hmm. we reject him. But isn't that, isn't that the nature of man? It is. It, it is the so to the extent mm -hmm. that when we are in the crucible, because this lesson is supposed to teach us that Christ was in the crucible, mm -hmm. just like we are in the crucible. Yes. So when we are doing good, mm -hmm. we must not expect people not to reject us. Hey. Okay. Because they will reject us. And the goodness that we do <laughs> does not make, us, make them like us. It, uh, okay. But it must does not stop us mm -hmm. from doing good. Because Christ did not stop doing good. Because this is the lesson, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, and uh, you know, you look at it, and when, Je when he was crying, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou killest the prophets mm -hmm. and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Mm -hmm. How often I would have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens and, and ye would not. So they are refusing to be gathered, to be protected. They were refusing. And many, 
refuse to be gathered. Yeah. And the spirit that we must have mm -hmm. is that we must say, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how we wish. The frustration now mm -hmm. is what I want to do for you mm -hmm. and who I am mm -hmm. and your rejection. Mm -hmm. the, 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 if you knew who, Paul says, if they knew who he was, they would not have crucified the Lord of what? Mm. The, the Lord of glory. And that is the frustration. I can do so much for you, mm. but you are rejecting me. Yeah, but then this is the beauty about the gospel. Mm. Peter only recognized who Christ is after the cross. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. After spending so much time, you, you, you even preached about the fact that he he struck that God, Christ had to put it back mm -hmm. and when he even went and then he, he, he rejected him three times mm -hmm. it is after that that he then realized ha, huh, this man is different look at John John begins to understand he was so angry, he wanted to make everyone to die and then now when he understood him after the cross he then speaks about the love of Christ in the book of John and easy. if you look at the messages of John, mm -hmm. they are all uh, centered around Christ and how Christ loved men. Yeah. And you only saw it mm -hmm. after the cross. So my view is that, uh, um, my understanding is that men who are coming to Christ, mm -hmm. we, well, we always expect them to, become, to be saints when they are coming. Mm -hmm. But they are not. Mm -hmm. oh. They are not saints. So we expect them, when they are coming, to be already good, mm -hmm. to be already... How can they be when they are not with Christ? And yet we, who are with Christ... So so we, we, the behavior that we do when we are meeting those who have no Christ, mm -hmm. huh? the, 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 when we are meeting them, those who are with, without Christ. Our behavior and attitude also suggests to me that we actually don't know him. Wow. Because if we knew him and what he went through, then we must be able to. Oh, that, hmm? yeah. huh? <laughs> that, that is my thinking. You are, you are tempting me. <laughs> I'm tempting, I'm tempting. Be tempted. You, you, you're tempting me to, to go to the direction. Now, the last lesson I mentioned it. Institutionalized religion. Mm that can be void of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, Abraham, when he goes on to the mountain, mm -hmm. those sacrifices mm -hmm. were something that they did. Mm -hmm. But the son says, the, 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 the wood is here, mm -hmm. the fire is, but where is the sacrificial lamp? Mm -hmm. The churches are there, mm -hmm. the preachers are there, mm -hmm. the suits are there, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the church structures are there, mm -hmm. the administrators are there. Mm -hmm. But the fundamental question is, where is mm -hmm. the sacrificial lamp? Yeah. So we, we might actually be in the direction of betraying Christ. Yeah. We, but, we, but because we've been with him, mm -hmm. we think we are, we are with him. Have, have you ever seen the anger mm -hmm. that Christians have mm -hmm. about those whom we believe do not have Christ? Mm -hmm. Look at even when we are in church. Mm -hmm. When somebody begins to attack you while you are in church, mm -hmm. you must be able to love them and bring them to where ah. you, this is what Christ did. It, it brings us to uh, the last week lesson to say that um, uh, when Christ is in us, we must bring those who are down there to us, right? And, and, and this bringing to us, sometimes you are bringing to us to the level where we are of people who are even rejecting the help that you want to give them. And when they see you, they see you as an enemy. He said, no, but my suffering, the goal, and all that I'm trying to do is for you to be where I am. And the challenge now for Christianity, especially for us as Christians, is to be able to understand others who are failing in areas where we have succeeded. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And you know, I, lo I love, I, I don't know if it was you who were saying this, mm -hmm. or it was you. I, I think it, it's, it's a blessing. But remember when you were talking and we were discussing his sermon. We always do this. Uh, please forgive us. We do it out of camera. 
and, and after the fact that the person who was who was struck by Peter's mm -hmm. hand. Malchus, yes, yes. Yeah. What's his name? Malchus. Malchus. Yeah. You said Malchus is the one who then identified Christ. Could yes. know, crucify him. Yes. Why, 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 could he, he was with Jesus. He was, yes. he, he's the one who identified Peter. Okay. Instead of reveling in the healing, wow. <laughs> in the reveling in the healing that had taken place, that is... Is he, you know, is he, in the way I is he's now talking about the fact that no, when you crucify him, crucify him also. <laughs> yes. and, but those are the people that Christ died for, and those are the people that we must go and come and get. Uh, Pastor, hmm. get some man. Yes. Jesus. Where is Pastor Bloss? <laughs> <laughs> we need him now. <laughs> we need him here. Yes. Jesus in Getsman. Uh, for, for me, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm. the, the thought which occupied the mind of Jesus mm. was the will of the Father. Mm. He has the suffering. And he even says, if, if it is possible, mm. let this cup pass. Mm. But nonetheless, let your will be done. Be done. And, and, and that, that brings a fundamental question in our experience in the crucible. Mm. Because if we are to be Christ-like, mm. we are to be Christ-like in our sufferings, but we're also to be like Christ in our attitude. Mm -hmm. That the question we ought to ask ourselves is, in all of this, let God's will, or is God's will being done? Mm -hmm. Besides the suffering, mm -hmm. what is God's will? Yeah, uh, your comments? So for me, Gethsemane, and, and obviously this is messed up by Blosse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, when you look at it as a garden, and it's interesting that it's also a garden, which is a paradise. Because Adam and Eve also messed it up in the garden. Oh. And, and the Garden of Eden is also uh, you know, spoken of as a paradise. Oh. And what was done in the Garden of Eden or in the Paradise of Eden is being restored mm. in Gethsemane. Mm. But look at how Christ does it. He goes with the, with, with the, with the 11 disciples, mm. leaves the other seven, eight, yeah. at this particular part, yeah. takes the other three to a particular part, mm. leaves them, and then he goes further. Oh. And, and Gethsemane is a place of pressing. Oh. We are being squashed. Mm -hmm. But in Gethsemane, there are different levels of those who are being squashed. Mm -hmm. All of us are in Gethsemane. We are going through a crucible. Mm -hmm. Different as they may be. Some may be mm -hmm. by the gate. Some may be at the center. And some may be at the deeper end. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, who's at the deeper end, mm -hmm. sweating blood, mm -hmm. comes to reach to men and finds men sleeping. Okay. There, there are some things that I just ah. wanted to, that I love about this passage. Uh -huh. uh, because I'm looking at Christ in the crucible. I hope I can be able to say this clearly. Help me. Um, when he goes into Gethsemane, mm -hmm. how many were there? The, with 12 disciples, mm -hmm. right? They get to a certain stage. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, remain here. And he goes further on. Um, and then he says to the other ones, okay, tarry here, okay? And then he goes further on. Mm -hmm. That's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. There are instances in our Christian journey when we will be with our friends. Mm -hmm. Then you take fewer friends to go further. Okay. But there's a point where you will be by yourself. Yeah. To the extent that when you come back, you find them sleeping. Mm. There are crucible moments mm -hmm. where you will just be by yourself. By yourself. Crucible moments. Where you will just be you and God and you are talking to him. And those moments, you don't start planning today and say, you know what, today you know, I want to be alone with God. No. The moment puts you into that space. That, that moment just puts you into that space. And you begin to have this conversation uh, in the mind, anticipating mm -hmm. the things that are coming. And the most interesting thing is, unlike most of us, the things that we are anticipating is about how life, how our good life is going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The things that we should be anticipating is how good 
other people's lives must be. Amen. And we are sweating the sweat of blood. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that other people. And you are, so the Gethsemane moment yes. for me yes. is the place where you get to be alone. To struggle for other people to be where you are. The lesson is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So this is this is yeah. that, that's what I thought the crucible moment. This, that's why the Gethsemane experience is for me. And he gets into this blood. He is sweating with blood. He's sweating with blood. He's sweating and he's by himself. And he comes back and says, "Hey, my brothers, why my brothers right are saying?" But I want to see because they are concerned about where they are going to be, either one on the right hand or the other on the left hand. Hey. So they are going to sleep. They're going to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the, 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 where they are and where he is are totally different. So we need to be able to, before Christ come, if we are going to vindicate his character, we need to be also be in that place where we struggle for other people's lives. We must not um, let go of the mission mm -hmm. because the people we are fighting for don't understand our mission. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't then join them to, to sleep. Mm -hmm. He goes back. If you read that, that account, mm -hmm. he then goes back until he gets to a point where he says, you know what, you guys, you, you can sleep on. But uh, on Wednesday, uh, the, the emphasis oh, there, uh, the, 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 the emphasis there is on uh, the crucified God um, and the events surrounding uh, the, 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 the crucifixion of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Matthew 27, the 6th to the ninth hour, darkness fell over the, the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the splitting of the curtain mm -hmm. uh, in, in the te temple, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, as, as well as um, uh, the, the earthquake and the tombs we, we, which were all open. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the, the punishment uh, of, of Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you know that the, the Romans had several methods of pun punishing. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we appreciate the most in the, this uh, lesson mm -hmm. is that Jesus experiences mm -hmm. the, the righteous judgment of God mm -hmm. over sin. Mm -hmm. God is a righteous judge mm -hmm. and, and he begins to feel the brunt mm -hmm. of God's indignation against sin. Mm -hmm. uh, remember Paul says God made him who knew no sin mm -hmm. to be sin for us. Mm -hmm that we might become the righteousness of God. So, so, so this is what we see on Wednesday. No, the, the most interesting thing about that um, experience um, that you, we, are, we are talking about is, uh, the, it, it says the crucified God. Mm -hmm. So the crucified perfect being, the crucified creator. Wow. Okay. Wow. Mm. Wow. So when we are Christians, we are going to get to a place where people want to crucify us. When we are with Christ, we are going to get into a place where people want to bring us up. Now, the most interesting thing about the crucifixion of Christ, and between the two of you, I've heard you speak about the crucifixion, both of you, and the, the things that were happening. I mean, when you begin to learn about the things that you guys have learned about that experience, Okay, it's very amazing about what, what Christ was going through in relation to the Roman culture mm -hmm. and the Jewish culture. Maybe, would you want to elaborate on that a little bit? It, it was a lot of humiliation, mm -hmm. right? Um, crucifixion can simply be called humiliation. Humiliation. And I want you to expound on that. Mm -hmm. So that at least, and then I want, I'll make my point. The, the humiliation, can you just go through in detail the, the, just the humiliation that Christ went through, both in the Roman and in the Jewish cultures. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I, if you may. Within the, the Jewish culture, it was curse. Mm -hmm. Cursed be the one who hangs on a tree. Mm -hmm. Within, the, within the, the, the Roman culture, mm -hmm. it was to be stripped naked mm -hmm. and it was to be beaten mm -hmm. and to be made as an example mm -hmm. that if you want to rise up against the Roman Empire, mm -hmm this is what is going to happen to you. So that humiliation that Christ goes through in nakedness, right? And in excruciating pain, in that excruciating pain, uh, God's love is seen. Because 
This is something for you. It is always in the nature of humanity to kill the best that God has given them. We want to bring down the best that God has given us because we can't get there. The level is too high. You know, yeah. some, you know something? <clears throat> when they understood it, the disciples, of what Christ was going through on behalf of mankind, Paul, Peter refused to be crucified in the same manner as Christ. Yes. Ooh, he, did. he says, I can't. Yes. It can't. The disciples then understood it. That what was this crucifixion all about? That's why Stephen was able to be stoned. Amen. That's why yeah. Peter, yeah. that's why John could be at Patmos. Mm. That's why Jerome has could be bent yeah. and his lips would be moving. Yeah. I'm not sure though, my friends, <laughs> if I'm ready for it. Because this is what we should be able to carry when we are Christ's children. This is what we should be able to carry. That we can be crucified for bringing people to us. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the moment we are called Christians, we should go through a cross. Mm. We should, isn't it? We should. Yeah. And, and that's... So here we are looking at the crucified God. We are not gods. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at the crucified Christian. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. The crucified Christian. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Generally, we should crucify those who are wrong, who do evil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the opposite. But in the crucible experience, wow. because God was able to be crucified, we also, as Christians, should be able to go through that experience. And when it comes, mm -hmm. We must be ready for it. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't know what your comments would be. I think that's what I get from this lesson here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, maybe we should go on to Thursday. Now we should go to the suffering God. Um, suffering, just to take a few minutes, uh, suffering God. The, the suffering God is a God who suffers with us. Mm -hmm. Because in Christ, we see the human face of God. Mm -hmm. A God who suffers with us. Mm -hmm. You don't want a God who suffers not with you, okay. because he's powerful enough to just solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But you need a God who has experienced, who has been hurricaned by the what? Mm -hmm. By the feelings of what? Uh, yeah. Our of our infirmities. So the suffering God for us is a loving God. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because in the suffering of Christ on the cross, mm -hmm. and these are the two things that we see on the cross, the suffering of God, of Christ on the cross shows us the love of God yeah. for humanity. Mm -hmm. That who's supposed to be crucified? It's humanity is supposed to be crucified for their sins. Mm -hmm. So the love of God is seen in, in that divine exchange mm -hmm. where Christ is exchanged for the human, mm -hmm. right? And what happens to the human? Mm -hmm. he's, he's alive. Mm -hmm. He's even crucifying God mm -hmm. who's dying for him. Mm -hmm. So we then also see the wrath of God, mm -hmm. those who don't take up Christ who has suffered for us. Yeah. So the cross is a sign for two things. Mm. The love of God, mm. Christ has died for us. The wrath of God, what God will do to those who don't choose Christ. Mm. Your, your comments? Second Timothy 3, 12. Mm. Yes, and all who desire to live godly mm. in Christ Jesus will suffer per persecution. Mm. That to me sounds like a promise mm. that once you have chosen mm. this road that I want to live godly in Christ, <laughs> you will suffer persecution F finally my brothers uh, i love john chapter 10 28 oh, yes. and i give unto them eternal life and yes. they shall never perish Amen. neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand book says i think it's philippians um it's, what does it say it says that uh, it is god who worketh in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure so this Christ experience, when we are learning about Christ, and we are learning about Christ in the crucible, when we are learning about in the crucible with Christ, mm -hmm. we must know that when we are going in there, okay, it is God who is working in me, mm -hmm. both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. And he has walked the road. 
but he is going to start working. So what we must struggle with, mm-hmm. I think, we must not struggle with many things. Mm-hmm. Because when we are struggling, we must not say we want to go in the crucible. No. We must just allow God to come and live in us. Amen. And when he lives in us, Amen. we are going to experience these things. And when we are experiencing them, mm-hmm. they will be easy because he says my yoke is easy mm-hmm. and my burden is light. Amen. I want to thank all of you, my friends, for assisting me in this program. Uh, it has been such a good journey and I thank God. Um, I have learned a lot of things, um, a lot of things, and I, I hope that the experience that we are going to have from now going forward is going to be different Amen. from what it has been before. Um, obviously, we are going to be starting the next quarter and we are going to have new things and we are going to have exciting times. Wish God God's speed as you travel, as you go to Kenya, Please be with them and pray. we pray that you are going to preach uh, wonderfully the word of God, Amen. that he, he, might speak, uh, he might speak through you, that you might not speak on his behalf, but he might speak through you. <laughs> but if you have any questions, uh, as I said, please um, ask uh, and then we will try and expound. But if we don't know, we will tell you that we don't know. If we have got a good point, um, we will learn from it. Uh, Pastor, can you close this uh, uh, quarter with a prayer, um, if you may? Thank you. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for 13 wonderful weeks that you have revealed yourself to us. We, as the facilitators here, have learned so many things about you. But we pray that our ministry here has been a blessing to someone who's going through a crucible. Thank you that at the end of this, we will have eternal life. So Father, teach us to ask you or to come into our lives that as we go through the fire, like the three Hebrew boys, the fourth man will appear and walk with us. Thank you so much, Father, for your blessings. And as we look forward to the last quarter of this year, may your spirit continue to lead us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Teacher, 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 teacher
Teachers, oh Kumbana. Teachers, teachers, oh Kumbana. Miri yo kwe nyanza. Gita kure so kazangu. Ungi si te kuni kayo. Kurumbi zane kusi gazo peri tashi kayo mirio kwe nyanza mirio kwe nyanza mirio kwe nyanza. Teacher, teacher, so cool, 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 cool,